So the last few things that we need to do are change the game conditions. We need to, I'm gonna put that background image in there to just to make it look a little bit more interesting. We're gonna score points when you catch food rather than when you dodge it. And the opposite happens when the game ends, then, um, you know, we, the game will end when you miss a food rather than um, when you catch one. And then we'll do some stuff to tweak the difficulty there. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is change that background image. So we know if we're looking through the code that during the game loop, we have a, a screen fill that screen fills the, the blue color in on the screen as sort of the background. So we're gonna change that and we're gonna change it to a file called skate underscore BG. Background image equals pygame dot image dot load. I'm just gonna go up here and borrow, let's see. Where is my, there it is. I'll just use that one. I just wanna use the right path, so I'm just cheating a little bit to make sure I got the right stuff here. And I'm gonna go down here and insert that path, bg.png, that takes me straight to that file. And then the last thing I need to do is put that image on the screen. So to put something on the screen, we use the blit command. <clears throat> what am I, where am I missing this here? Let screen dot blit. Ha ha. That's what I was looking for. Screen dot blit. <laughs> and then we're going to put the surface in here. And then we're going to put the coordinates as a tuple, which is 0, 0. That's the upper left-hand corner of that image. And so now I have a skateboarder right on the street. And we need to fix the conditions here. So the first thing that we need to figure out is what happens when there's a collision. Co so I'm going to go down to this area where we have Sprite Collide Any. And this is probably the most significant code change I'm actually going to make, is I'm actually going to change this to a different function. Because what I want to know is what, what is this function can I can use now Sprite Collide has an extra parameter that allows you to say whether a Sprite gets killed or not when it runs into the player. So now all I have to do is true and each of those food Sprites is gonna disappear when it touches the player. So I don't need player kill. We don't want the player to get killed here. We also don't want it to stop running when you catch a food item. All we want when you when you uh, catch a food item is for the score to go up by one. So now the food no longer kills me and I can catch the food and make it disappear. So we're good and I'm getting points for that. So now the other thing we have to change is what happens when the food hits the ground. So when the food hits the ground, we need to make sure that, that the user, uh, that the game ends, okay? So the game ends when the food hits the ground. So what we want is we're not changing the score anymore, so we don't use global score. What we want is we want to change 
this, the running loop, to the running variable to false. So I'm going to say global running so I can access that. And then I'm going to change running to false when one of the food hits the ground. So let's test that and see if it works. Food hits the ground, game's over. Okay? So now we're catching the food and all of that, but obviously the game is really, really hard, right? <laughs> the foods, you're not, nobody's gonna last uh, even up to 10 points here. So I wanna slow the food down and probably speed up the player. So the first thing I wanna do before I do those things is I wanna change the interval of time between food drops because it's just like too much. So I'm gonna say 800. That'll slow it way down, make it more doable. So the other things that I'm gonna do is I need to change the enemy's speed. And the easiest way to do that is to start with a slower speed maybe like two and five, and maybe that'll help. And then the other thing I wanna do is I wanna speed up the player. So the player right here moves five pixels at a time, left and right. I'm just gonna move it to 10. Go big or go home, right? All right, so now I've made some adjustments and I would probably want to play test this for a little while to check the difficulty level, but the food is still going to get faster and faster as the points go up. And it's sufficiently difficult, I think. So there's that. So we have the background image, we have points scored, the game end, and then tweaking the difficulty is really just about changing, playing with the variables in the game, testing it out, um, and seeing how it goes. But, uh, other than that, it's it's a really it's not too hard to take a game, and you can see the similar mechanic here. But now I've changed it to a fairly different game, and uh, it would it didn't even take that long. So uh, you have that starter code, and I highly recommend you use your imagination and see what you can come up with. Your game doesn't have to have all those features. I just want you to do something to make it your own. Okay, do some things. Change, change some stuff about it. So um, I will leave you with that and we have some work time.